Welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd just do a quick video today. Uh, this one won't take long. And if you're not interested in well formula, then this one can be skipped. So I went into the garage. Uh, we're one week away from starting off our 2024 season. And I realized my new engine hasn't even been running. Um, it's not a great spare or even this season's main engine if it hasn't been running. So I figured I would get to doing that. So in order to get that ready, I needed to put the engine mounts on it. This is probably one of the biggest questions when joining uh, FP4 and the World Formula um, series, the engine mounts. Um, because we're the only people in the UK uh, that run these engines, there isn't really some stock engine mounts that you can just go and buy off the shelf. Some people have used uh, Honda mounts on some of the chassis, but on the OTKs, which most of us run in the UK, there isn't really a mount that just works. Some people have adapted some seven cart mounts but I just wanted to introduce this to you today. So this is a mount that some of our members um, have actually had CNC'd. It's uh, aircraft grade aluminium, nice and light. It's got some lightning holes and um, they just put that on the bottom of the engine because the manual does actually state that it should be on a solid plate. Um, so this just protects the engine because one of the weak points or one of the only weak points on this engine is the side plate gaskets, which I've mentioned before. So. Um, when these come, the guys just put the engines on and then put bolt down from the top. I don't like doing that. I like it at a bit quicker change. So I just buy some stud, cut that down, red Loctite it in, which is why I got the red Loctite there, just as a bit of a prop. And then uh, I can just drop the engine on, four bolts, and she's in place. Uh, but this is a spare engine and I have bought a spare plate because that way I've only got the two bolts to then just quickly change engines. Um, while we're here, so I have got uh, my starter motor just to show you, because I'm gonna go, I'll cut in a video of just round the engine so you can see the clutch and the bits and bobs. Um, unfortunately, I'm not light enough to run a starter motor, but you can in our series um, if you're um, not a 13 and a half stone adult and uh, one of our younger drivers or younger, uh, sorry, uh, one of our adults that weighs a little bit less, you can run a starter motor and have it electric start, but unfortunately not for me. Um, other thing to mention, these engines are very, very selective over oil. Put the right oil in them and they run forever, and put the wrong oil in them and they don't run for very long at all. The oil I would recommend is the uh, AMS Oil 4T racing oil made in conjunction with Briggs & Stratton. So the Gen 1 engines uh, did have real reliability issues and um, Briggs & Stratton reached out to AMS Oil and said, look, we've got some specific needs here. Can you help us? I've run this for five years in all of my new engines. I've never had a problem. Um, I do understand there's also Redline oil and I'll try and find a, a clip of that and I'll put it on the screen. Um, a lot of our members have also run that for multiple years and had no issues, but these engines must run on one of those two um, oils. Have seen um, a few club members before say no oil is oil and they've put different oil in and unfortunately their engines have um, killed themselves. So new air filter here, because as I say, the engine hasn't run. So I just need to put a little bit of oil on that to help that. And then um, I'll be ready to drop this straight on my chassis when I get to lead um, this coming Friday. The running procedure for these, please check the manual. Don't take my word for it. But um, over, I've run in about five of these new engines now. And um, what I always do is I run the engine for 10 to 15 minutes to get up to full temperature without the chain on it, but on the chassis, because they do vibrate quite a lot, especially when they're new. Um, let it cool down completely. Then I'll put the chain on it and, and run it on the bench. Um, I'll change the oil in between each one of these. So um, basically you get two oil changes out of a bottle. So um, run it without the chain, change the oil, run it with the chain, I'll leave that oil in. Um, I'll then put it on the track, do a half RPM run, so a slow run round, taking it up to about 4,000, 5,000 RPM, just giving the engine a chance. Change oil once again, so two oil changes as part of the braking procedure. Then I'll put um, new oil in and give her hell. And then, frankly, as long as you give her an oil change every full weekend, um, she'll keep looking after you. The only things really to do um, uh, is, as I've said before, check the lash, uh, the valve lash, the Americans call it, um, on the overhead valves and cleaning your clutch. And I'll just cut in some video uh, of the clutch because obviously it's the other side of the engine. So look, hopefully that's been of use to you. If you have got any questions around the world formula or mount it, feel free to drop me a line. If you wanna know more about the series um, at or the FP4 Car Club, I'll put a link in the description or I'll put it on the screen now where you can go to their social media and have a chat with the guys there and they can tell you more about the formula. Um, 
as I say, round one uh, next weekend at Lid, and we will be uh, getting our season underway. So uh, watch the channel, and um, I'll have a video out on that shortly.